This Woodworker Safety Week special program is brought to you by MicroJig. Woodworking evolves. On today's show, I'm going to give you a close look at one of my all-time favorite safety items, MicroJig's Gripper. So you might be wondering, what exactly is the gripper? Well, to boil it down in the simplest terms, it's a very fancy but very safe push stick. And you can use it on a number of tools in the shop. Now, for me, I really have only cracked open the surface of all the things that this system can do. And I sometimes have to go to the website and refresh my memory on all the great things that it can do and the possibilities it opens up. Uh, it also lets you do things that normally wouldn't be very safe to do, especially here at the table saw. So before we get into the details of what the gripper can do and what I like to use it for, let me show you what some of the problems are with traditional push sticks and the things that we typically use in the workshop. So I have a nice selection of some pretty common push sticks and push shoes, paddles, things that you might use here at the table saw, and a few cuts of wood that we can use as examples for where things might go a little bit wrong. So first let's start with this nice wide piece of ply. Okay, something like this, by the time you're making this cut, you could, you could use your hand to do this, but it gets a little bit close. I mean, anytime we can keep our fingers away from the blade, the further our fingers are away from it, the safer it's going to be. That's the bottom line. So if you use something like a push paddle here, that certainly is one option. Not too bad for this particular situation. If you use one of these skinny push sticks, well, that's real bad news because now we're pushing at the back of the workpiece, and when you're pushing forward and down at the same time, what happens? the piece wants to flip up, and that's exactly what this blade wants to happen. Okay, that's how kickback starts. All right, so that's always a, a bad idea. And even if you have a push shoe, I mean, frankly, this is one that I sell on my website. It's got my face on it. This one is much better. Uh, you could still push down if you're not careful, but because of the sort of forward-facing design here, there's a lot of pressure at this point, and it's much safer to push through. But you still do run a little bit of a risk, and you don't have much control side to side. Um, you know, you only have this little hook on the back controlling the workpiece. So it's not absolutely ideal. We can certainly do better. Now looking at a nice skinny little piece like this, maybe you're making a runner for a crosscut sled or something and you want to make a nice cut. This becomes, I mean, obviously you can't use the paddle, so you're going to have to use something like a push shoe, okay? That will certainly do it and it will fit between the blade and the fence, but of course we still have that issue with a long workpiece that it wants to flip up. Further exacerbated when you use something like this. Okay, that's nearly impossible to control. Frankly, this is an extremely dangerous way to cut this piece. Okay, so that is where we see some serious limitations there. And of course, even on a piece that's a little bit wider, once again, you don't really wanna use your fingers on a cut like this, grant it, you could, you know, you could get your fingers in there, but that's scary business. Uh, out of these that I have on the bench here, the only one, or on the table saw here, the only one that I would even think about using for this cut is my push stick, like so. It makes it a little bit safer, but here's the thing. The gripper actually will make all of those cuts with all of those pieces way safer. So let me first review a few of the basic features, show you how this thing goes together and what it's capable of doing, and then we'll do some practice cuts. Now I have two grippers to show you here today. This one is actually an older model. This is the first one I ever purchased. I got this used from a buddy of mine, bought it as is, and I have used this on just about every project since then, and it still is in great shape. Now the thing is, since then, they've made a number of changes so that you could add a bunch of different things on. Uh, some of the attachments allow you to do operations that you might not otherwise be able to do, but even still, you can see they're really not that different. And frankly, because this is the way that I got it, it didn't come with any other attachments, I just got used to using it this way. And that's about the same way that I use it now, even though I can do a lot more with it. Uh, frankly, you know, I'm not a spokesperson for, for micro jig or gripper, so I don't really necessarily even know all the terminology and all the cool things that this system can do. But now I'm just here to show you, just in its basic form, how useful this can be. So let's take a closer look at the underside so you can see what's really going on here. First of all, we have a plate to the outside that really sort of helps to balance as you're running it over the saw. We've got a workpiece here. Let's say we wanted to push that through. If you're just getting the end of the, uh, the gripper on there, that wouldn't be very stable if you didn't have some support 
on the outside. So that's what this is here for. So you would put your uh, gripper right on top of the workpiece, push it down, and then push down on this little shoe or foot here and tighten it in place. And now we're completely stabilized as we push it across the tool. Now, if you look at the underside, you can see we have one of these little feet here that's actually movable. And the reason you wanna do that is because depending on where you're going to place this in relation to the blade, you may need to move that to provide uh, more support in an area where you need it. And it also allows the blade to pass through a channel safely without contacting the gripper itself because we you know, obviously we don't wanna cut into it. So this is really handy and you could tighten that down wherever you want it to go. Now, although the gripper does a fantastic job of, well, what it's meant to do, gripping the workpiece as you push it through, it's sometimes nice to have a little bit of extra support, much like a traditional push shoe has with this little uh, hook here at the end. You can actually add a small hook in the back, tighten it in place, and that will serve that exact same purpose. So in addition to the, the green grippy stuff, you've got this hook in the back that's gonna help push it through uh, for some of those more difficult cuts where the blade is actually really pushing back a lot, you'll be able to push through with no problem just using this little add-on hook. So now let's get the gripper set up to make a few test cuts at the table saw. So I'm just going to take this skinny piece of walnut here and take about an eighth of an inch off the edge and I'm going to use the gripper to push it through. Now the first thing I like to set is the adjustable foot here. I want to make sure that the large foot is resting on the workpiece. I want the benefit of all this extra surface area. So I'm gonna push this over to the right, and what I'm looking for is I just wanna clear the blade. I want it fully on the workpiece, but in a, you know, so it's not in the path of the blade. And that actually, that's pretty close. But remember, we're gonna be pushing this into the fence as we go. So even if I am just slightly clearing the blade, that will usually make it through without making any contact whatsoever. So once I'm safely in the clear, Tighten it down. And of course, I want a little bit more support because this can rock back and forth. So loosen these guys. I'll drop the support, tighten it back up. And now I should be able to safely maneuver this piece all the way through the cut with my hand passing over the blade. That's something we would normally never do. You don't want your hand directly over the blade if you can avoid it. But in this case, it's incredibly stable and it's very safe because I've got a lot of protection between my hand and the blade itself and a lot of support. So let's make a test cut. So we have a nice smooth cut, no burning. Because we were able to safely push through at a consistent feed rate, we get a smoother cut as a result. The other thing I want you to notice is at the end of the cut, I still had control over my workpiece, so we don't have any situations where the workpiece is just flopping all over the place because these rubber grip feet still give me complete control and I could safely maneuver the workpiece away from the blade while the blade comes to a stop. Now let's say you want to cut some quarter inch strips for edge banding, for plywood, for instance. It would be great if you could just set your fence for a quarter inch and start making these cuts, but if you've ever tried this, you know how dangerous this can be. Certainly, you could use a push stick like this to fit between the blade and the fence, but man, I gotta tell you, that scares the crap out of me. So, uh, usually what you wind up having to do is adjusting your fence so that you're making the cuts on the outside of the workpiece. The problem there is after every cut, you need to readjust the fence so that you have a quarter inch fall off piece. And there are jigs out there that will improve that process, but it's still kind of a pain in the butt and it's relatively inconsistent. So for me, this is something that the gripper, uh, probably the most frequently used thing that I do with the gripper is to make thin strips like this. So I'm gonna set the fence for my quarter inch. Then I just wanna make sure that the thin foot of the gripper will pass through freely without contacting that blade. And it looks like it's gonna be just fine. Now this workpiece is wide enough where I don't necessarily have the foot hanging off the edge. So I just wanna make sure that the foot is nice and flat on the workpiece. And all my little grippy feet are on the workpiece. And there's plenty of space for the blade to pass through. So let's cut a couple of thin strips. And there you go. Not only is it safe, not only is it consistent, we'll be able to cut as many of these as we want, but the cut quality is actually improved because as we're pushing through the blade, 
These pieces don't have an opportunity to wander. Even at the end of the cut, they're still gonna stay exactly where we want them. So you wind up with a much cleaner surface here as you get to the end of the cut, which is normally where you might start to see you know, some ridge marks and things from the blade as the workpiece starts to move at the very end. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, if you're cutting a really dense hardwood, this, in this case, this is alder. This is really not big, uh, not very dense and not too hard to push through the blade. But if it is proving difficult, you may find a little bit of extra security would be nice. And that's where you can use this hook. So I'm just gonna put this guy in the back. Like so now I consider this hook to be sacrificial. You may wanna buy a couple of these for different operations. As the blade passes through, it cuts a little zero clearance kerf in there for us. But if you're making a lot of repeated cuts, it's well worth it to do that because it'll be that much safer. And now you can see, even though I have this kerf here, no matter how many times I make this cut, I still have support on both sides of the blade to push those little teeny tiny pieces through. Really, really nice to have. Now I'm gonna show you why it might be handy to actually have two grippers on hand. Check this out. On a long rip like this, it can be really tricky to keep this piece nice and stable. Usually you have to start back here, which means your body is very far away from the action. So you have to use uh, feather boards and all types of things to be able to stabilize this piece as you push it through. But if you have two grippers, you can actually do a sort of hand over hand method of controlling this piece the entire way. Let me show you how it's done. And as you can see, you've got complete control of the workpiece. Uh, even when it's all the way back here, let's get this piece out of the way. Even when it's all the way back here, this one bit of support right there stabilizes the entire piece because you can put quite a bit of your body weight on it so that as you're pushing it through, you're going through the motions on each one of these. You never, there's never a point where you don't have control over the workpiece. So it stays up against the fence the entire time. It's a nice consistent cut. And then even at the very end of the cut, you still maintain control. So those are just a few of the operations that I like to do with the gripper at the table saw. And frankly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So I'm gonna put some links in the show notes to videos that will go into further depth and further detail about the things that you can do with the gripper. And hey, if you're gonna put the money out for something like this, you should know all the powerful things that it can do and how much safer it can make standard operations in the wood shop. And if you're ever at a live show, chances are you're gonna run across my buddy Bruce at Microjig. He does a fantastic demo and shows you some amazing things that you could do with this handy little tool. So aside from that, I wanna show you a couple of things that I do using the other tools in the shop because it's not all just about the table saw. So we've got the jointer, the router table, and the band saw. Let's jump right in. The gripper has exceptional gripping power at the jointer. You'll also have the option of using the trailing hook when necessary. At the router table, you can maintain complete control when cutting joinery and profiles, while also protecting your hands from the spinning bit. At the bandsaw, you'll have incredible control while resawing, allowing you to apply consistent pressure, resulting in a cleaner cut. Once again, the trailing hook makes this process a breeze. So in a nutshell, that's the gripper system. You can find out more information at Microjig's website, which is microjig.com. Now they also have a few other products that you really want to check out like the zero play guide bars if you're making jigs for the table saw or anything that has a miter slot. Uh, you could also check out the MJ splitter. If you've got an older saw or you want a splitter that doesn't get in the way and you don't need to remove it to use things like sleds, the MJ splitter is a great way to soup up the safety on your old saw. So thanks for watching, have a great safety week and stay safe in your workshops.